like the summer series, the autumn series, which of course was in summer technically, uh, threw up a first time ranking event winner this time with Damon Hedda, who of course won a non-ranking event last year, but this was his first ranking event winning the uh, third of the five. Our question of the week though is, will he one day be the highest ranked Australian darts player? Yeah, this is uh, one of our questions of the week and the one that we're going to talk about on the show this week. And at the moment, we've still got the best part of, I think, three or four days left running on the poll on Twitter. But it's uh, an overwhelming majority going with yes, 77% going with with yes, that he is going to one day overhaul Kyle Anderson and then Simon Whitlock to become the the number one ranked Australian in the PDC. No getting with uh, 23% at the moment. Uh, We've had one reply so far, a couple of replies actually on the, the tweet that we put out. John Thompson, he said, the answer to that question depends on whether... Corey Cadby could get his act together, but regardless of that, it's only a matter of time until it's not Whitlock. We've had another one as well come in saying that, yes, unless Corey Cadby mounts a a comeback, although Hetham might have such a head start by then that he may become number one anyway. So Corey Cadby's name is coming into the conversation, but at this moment in time, he is a player that doesn't have a tour card. So I I suppose we can't really talk too much with regards to his hopes of overhauling Sam Whitlock. But yes, I mean, for Damon Hetter, I think it is... It's going to take a little while. You look at the rankings at the moment. Sam Whitlock is, is well up there, still inside the, the top 20 in the world. I think Damon's now, he's broke into the top 100. I think he's around about 80 at the moment. But he's starting to qualify for these big events. He, he's missed out on the World Grand Prix, but he's qualified, I believe, for the Grand Slam because he's finished as the, the highest ranked player on the Autumn Series Order of Merit not to qualify yet. So he's going to get some, some money from that at least, and you'll expect him to be in the World Championship at the end of the year. So for me, he's a, he's a player that's only going forwards and he's a player with a, a lot of ability. I've, I've rated him very highly for, for a long time. Of course, he won that World Series event last year, qualified for the, for the World Championship and then went through Q School, got through that. And I suppose early doors, he, he didn't quite get the runs the, the first three months of the season before it was cut off. We didn't see him go on any big runs at all, but he was putting in some t- top averages and he said it himself that if he carried on playing to that level, it would only be a matter of time before he did get the rewards for that and we say that about a lot of players and I'm sure we'll talk about a few more of them on this show and going forward as well that there's some players that are playing well but not quite getting the, the rub of the green if you like but Damon Hitter his rewards have come this week his, his first game of the, the the series the autumn series 102 average lost out in the, in the first round but came back the, the following day went all the way and some some really good stuff in there to beat Michael Van Gerwen Dimitri van der Berg the, the reigning world match play champion and Stephen Bunting in the semi-finals and, and Joe Cullen in the final eight four in the end. So he, he's put in some some really big performances there. But the following day as well, getting to a quarter final as well. I just spoke a moment ago about players winning a title and then not being able to to back it up the following day. But he's put in again some some big results, being Christoph Ratajski, Dave Chisnell, Mervyn King, some some top quality operators there. So for me, yeah, I, I do think one day we will see Damon Hetter get to that top spot in terms of the the Australian players in the in the order of merit but I do think it is going to be a a little while yet considering there, there is that big gap between well the two in there at the minute you've got Simon Whitlock and, and Kyle Anderson who unfortunately we've not seen much of recently yeah and uh, you mentioned how he just missed out on qualifying for the uh, World Grand Prix as did Simon Whitlock by the way uh, first time in his professional career that Whitlock has missed out on that event and wasn't that long ago what was it three years ago now we lost a, in a deciding set to daryl gurney but whitlock um won't be there so there won't be any australian in well there won't be anyone in dublin but in what would normally be in dublin now in coventry for the world grand prix but the big reason why damon had a missed out was that like kyle anderson he had to miss the summer series uh, none of the Australian players who live overseas were able to make it for the summer series. He was able to get over for the autumn series and it made a big difference. He won that title. He made the quarterfinal, like you mentioned. And other than on the final day where maybe he was feeling a little bit of pressure, knowing that he needed to get a couple of results, most likely to get into the world of Grand Prix, he went out with his worst performance of the week um, to Steve West in the first round. It's been one of his worst performances. In fact, as a professional, you can't have it every match. And he was phenomenal for the first four days of the weekend or first four days of the weekend, first four days of the week. And that's what got him into contention. It's what got him that first title. It's what got him now the overwhelming favorite, according to the poll to one day be the top ranked Australian. And as you said, Whitlock can't hold it forever. Whitlock is at near the end of his career. He's admitted it himself. I don't think he's planning to uh, hang up the Allen keys anytime soon. Um, he's still going to keep sharpening those points, but he is on the downward spiral, 
and missing out on a major TV event for the first time yeah, won't sit well with him and won't give him confidence, even if he put in a valiant effort over the last uh, five days to get into contention, uh, playing uh, or at least getting the best results he'd gotten in quite some time because he was well back and he ended up getting himself to within a thousand pounds or so of moving into the last provisional spot. Now, of course, he still has a chance if someone in the top 16 chooses not to show up. And we've seen Gary Anderson just pull out of a few events. So maybe there will be a way for Sam Whitlock to backdoor into it. But the fact that he is missed out and stands to miss out on some other events coming forward means there's a, means that gap is going to narrow, even though Damon Hedda didn't qualify. And Damon Hedda has been one of the breakthrough players this year. I think it's just a matter of time before he becomes the top-ranked Australian. Even if Simon Whitlock gets back into these TV events, Damon Hedda will be there as well. And Hedda has a lot more left in the tank than Simon Whitlock does, at least if we look three, four, five years down the line. So I think the answer is yes, regardless how soon Corey Cadby gets back. Obviously, that is a wrinkle. If Corey Cadby gets back and hits the ground running again, it could change things. But I think Hedda has that head start and will be in the world match play next year, will be in all the TV events next year because he is that good. And that's what's going to see him rise into the top 32 and maybe even further.